So we will be doing, as I told you, we're doing an engineering unit um, from Engineering is Elementary. And we're going to actually read a storybook about a boy who ha actually has an engineering problem. And he, we're going to see how he solves the problem, and then we're going to try to help solve that problem as well. So let's talk about what do you think transportation engineers might do? Do we know what an engineer does? Matthew. Um, an engineer is someone who uh, like makes the cars. Like, okay, um, someone like, who makes things? Like a mechanic. Okay, go ahead. Um, they make things better. Okay, so engineers make things and then they make things better. Okay, in this story, there's going to be a transportation engineer. So we're going to learn a little bit more about what transportation engineers actually do. Um, so before we get into this story, I want to kind of talk about some things that will be in the story, and I want to see what you already know. So what do you already know about magnets? Alex. Um, so um, if magnets have, if there's like a positive, um, charge and a, and a negative charge, they would go together and two of the same charges would push away from each other. Okay, so I hear there's a positive side and a negative side to magnets. Is there another word that we use besides negatives and negative and positive to describe the different ends of a magnet? Yes. The south pole and the north pole. Okay, so south pole and north pole. So what you're saying, Alex, is if two south poles were were touching, they would actually push away. Okay. So can you think of a word that means push away, Darian? Repel. Repel. I want you to notice on that back wall, I have some vocabulary words listed, and you all already know some of them. So we know that repel means to push away. We know that magnets have two ends, a north pole and a south pole. We know that like poles do what? They push away or repel. repel. Okay, what else do we know about magnets? Go ahead, Deshaun. Two opposite sides, they like, they like gravitate towards each other like attract to each other. Okay, so two opposite sides, he said, would gravitate or attract to each other. Thumbs up if you agree with um, Deshaun about this. Okay, you all agree that opposites attract, and what Alex said was the like poles do what? Yeah. Repel. Repel, right? So do you have anything else that we, can, that we know about magnets, Matthew? Um, that magnets are also attracted to um, like metal type things. Excellent. Very important. Uh, magnets are attracted to metal. Are, are magnets attracted to all metal? So some metals, like aluminum, which in soda cans, aren't attracted to magnets. But for the most part, metals are attracted to magnets. Do we know anything else we want to add that we know about magnets? Yes? Like, if you put one magnet on each side of the paper, magnets still stick together? So there's kind of a force, right, a magnetic field, and it can actually go through materials is what Albert's saying. So let's go on to what we think a maglev train is. So this, in this story, we're going to be learning about maglev trains. Take a guess what you think a maglev train might be. Sandro? A maglev train might be a train that uses magnets. So Okay, what made you think of magnets? Why, why, why do you think a maglev train might use magnets? What made you think it might use magnets? Okay, so you see the mag, right? And you see magnets. Where do you think the lev comes from? Darian? Levitation. Levitate, or levitation you said. Okay, let's take a look back at our vocabulary wall. You see the word levitate. Somebody else tell me what the word levitate means. Taekwon? Like, float. like floating, okay? So you're saying that this L-E-V might have come from the word levitate. So magnets, floating, train. Sounds kind of cool. Has every, yes. I think it's when like, 
when they have magnets at the bottom of the train so they can and they like they're not touching they're like kind of levitating over the track okay what do you think it could be the um the vehicle could have um the same pole of the magic magnet um with the um the um the ground okay repelling oh so they might repel each other interesting all right now this story takes place in japan so I want to ask you, what do you know about Japan? Um, Alex. They'd have some trains that will um, actually will, that will actually go faster than trains we have like in America. Okay, so maybe a lot of technology. Okay. Anybody you know any anyone else um, know anything about Japan? That, yes. Um, a lot of items here come from Japan. Okay, some of the things that we have here were actually made in Japan, you're saying? Yes. Okay. All right, so in a minute, we're going to break out into groups, and we're going to be reading the book in our groups. So as we read, I just want to mention this to you. We've been talking about engineering, and we have, there's different steps to the engineering design process. And as we read, I want you to look for those steps. So one of the steps is to ask. So as we read, I want you to try to think, when in this story is Hikaru in the ask part of the engineering design process? OK, so we are going to break up into groups. And so what I have is my three groups. I have the Dangs. I have the dudes and I have the bookies. And I'll have the dudes first. The dudes are going to meet up here with me. And then we have the bookies, which will be at, at the laptop center. Okay, normally there aren't two teachers in a room, but you're lucky you have two teachers today, so you'll be reading the book with both myself and Miss Barnes. And then when you get to the laptop center, I have all the vocabulary words listed up there. What, do you, what difference do you see between the yellow vocabulary words and the pink vocabulary words? What difference do you see between these? Uh, they're like translated into another language. Which, ones, which words are in another language? Um, the pink. The pink words. Okay, so these words are in Japanese, or some of the words in pink are in Japanese. When you get to the computer center, I want you to look up what these words are. Focus on these um, pink words here, these Japanese words, because most likely you don't know them. Look them up, get pictures, see what they are. We Words don't help as much as pictures do, so I want to actually see what sashimi looks like and you can actually draw a little picture next to your word. So we've got, the, we've got a reading center with Miss Barnes, or just as a group, the reading center with myself, and we've got our vocabulary center at the laptops. I'd like you to stand up, push in your chair. Okay, I'm, well, I'm okay. reading and saying it had been another long day with regular school first is. and cram school after okay, we'll that. Um, I don't know, where would people go after regular school possibly? Like an after school program? Oh, why do you think it could be an after school program? Um, they probably, like, they do, like, activities there. What's the use of cram school if we don't try our best to pass the exams? Okay, so we're seeing that our prediction was right, that that cram school is like a... After school. Right, because they're studying for what? Exam. Right, the middle school entrance exam. So that's to get into a middle school. Okay. It says, once through my front door, I stood in the gen can and took off my shoes. What do you think? Like, it's the way of, like, like when, you, when you're in front of the entrance, like, you have to take off your shoes and put it right there. Okay. So All right. And let's see what the glossary says gen can is. It's a map, right? Okay, so that they call that map capital of the United States. Sensei is a Japanese word that is literally translated as a friend of born before a god. Okay, I'm going to have you stop where you are, and we are going to do a rotation.
Matthew's group is going to come to me. This group is going to go to the laptops. And the laptop group, you're going to come over here. Okay? If I could have you stand, make sure you take your book, your paper. All right. So we haven't started in the book. So go ahead and let's open up our book. Now, if I don't know how to pronounce it, where could I find out where to pronounce it? Stefan? In the glossary. In the glossary. So let's go back to the glossary. And it says Rondo Seru. And that helps us with it. Ron, good. Rondo Seru. And what is a Rondo Seru? Go ahead, KJ. It is a firm sided backpack made of firm leather. Okay, so it's a leather backpack? Yeah. And you already drew a picture for me. Excellent. Good. And you Thank found that on the laptop, backpack. right? Yes. Okay. Hmm. I thought again about my conversation with Miss Takamaru the night before. The problem is every store is getting tiny toys at the same time. What will make kids come to Azuki Toys instead of the big toy store across town? Okay, so if I could have all eyes and ears up here. And once you finish reading, so if at this center you're going to finish reading, but if your group is finished reading, what I want you to work on is the first page in the packet I gave you. You're going to go ahead and fill in where the definitions fit, where these uh, vocabulary words fit, which uh, definition they go with. And then on the back, you're going to start thinking about that design process we talked about yesterday. And you're going to think about the different steps in the story that Hikaru had to go through to solve his problem. The steps that engineers use to design something to solve a problem is engineering design process. Oh, number six is a transportation engineer. Okay. <clears throat> Seems like all the groups have kind of finished up for the most part, and we've all gotten to finish up reading the story. You're about to go to lunch. When you come back from lunch, we are going to actually go outside and do some practice. We're going to actually learn some more about what transportation engineers. You're going to get to be transportation engineers this afternoon. Okay, so my name is Deborah Kelly Thomas. I teach in Hollywood, Florida at Colbert Elementary and I work with fifth grade. I think the storybook helps set the t context for the design process in EIE in that <clears throat> the kids are able to see how Hikaru works through the different stages of the design process. They're also introduced to what a transportation engineer is, Mrs. Takamaru. Um, at the same time, they're learning about different, a different culture. They find that really interesting. And um, I think it makes it more real and understand, wow, kids can solve design challenges too, because Hikaru's basically their age.